Grace and peace, everybody. You're here with Apostle George Dixon, a.k.a. New Rev in the house, bringing you word and power through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today we want to discuss deliverance. Deliverance is something that a lot of churches, they, they say that they do, uh, but I, I find that they say the words, but they're really not focused on just deliverance. It's, it's about everything else. And and reason I'm hearing it like this is because it's my pet peeve. I see people today, they're suffering, and they're going through all kinds of situations and circumstances. They're in spiritual warfare. And they're being preached to, but they're never being activated into the kingdom. They're being preached to, but they still don't know who they are within the kingdom. Well, what I, I'm going to attempt to do uh, within this, um, this uh, show here is to begin to take us on a course of recognizing some key things in our lives that we need to address in order to deal what, with what uh, deliverance is really all about. First, first of all, you know, a lot of people want to lay hands or they want to talk about somebody else's situation or their circumstances. But, you know, there's a scripture in the Bible according to Matthew that um, I wrote it down, 7 and 5, because so I didn't want to forget it because sometimes I get my, my numbers inverted. But it's 7 and 5 that teaches us that before you can do anything with anybody else, in other words, if you, you want to bring fault to your brother or your sister, you first must get that beam out of your eye first. You got to get the beam out of your eye before you can get the splendor out of your brother's eye. So what does that have to do with deliverance? You cannot cast anything out of anybody or uh, a work in deliverance until you first deal with the demons that are on the inside of you. What do you mean I got demons? Uh, I'm a Christian. I don't have demons. Uh, I beg the difference. Anger is a demon. Uh, greed is a demon. Gluttonous is a demon, etc. So, you know, don't say you don't have demons. We do have demons. If not, then how do we sin? Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Something's going on to make you fall short of the glory of God. So the first thing you got to do is begin to be real and recognize that we all fall short of the glory of God. There's something working on the inside that does not agree with the will of God. There's something on the inside that calls us to uh, uh, go to this place called backsliding. And let's, let's talk about backsliding. First of all, backsliding is being disobedient to the will of God. If you're not doing what the Word of God said, you, you're in a backslidden state. So if you're doing that constantly, you constantly backslid. I believe that's why in Jeremiah they talked about that God is married to the backslide because He know that we got to grow. He know that we're going to fall short. He know that we're going to fall off the wagon. So now that I've painted this picture, now that I have your attention, I want to help people out there and, and that is viewing this, this, uh, this show to understand that it's okay to admit your fault. The Bible declares when we confess our faults to Him that He's faithful and just to forgive us. And plus, we need to confess our faults one to another. You need to go tell somebody you made a mistake. You, may, you need to go tell somebody that you missed the mark because you may have hurt somebody thinking that you're right and you were wrong. Okay? So, First of all, we want to go to the book of Mark so we can set some type of uh, a, a foundation for our study of deliverance. Let's go to Mark, the 16th chapter, and I'm going to get myself adjusted here. Mark, the 16th chapter, and we want to look at verses 17 and 18. And I'm going to read, and I hope that you do have your Bible to your side, and those that are going to be tuning in, always bring your sword, because you, you, you know good, you can't fight if you don't have a weapon on the battlefield. And your sword is going to help you to help yourself as well as help others. Because, you know, when Jesus was in the wilderness, what did he do? He didn't try to put up his dukes when Satan came out there to test him. What did he do? He told him very simple, it is written. And then he put the word of God on Satan to the point that the one that was trying to bring temptation to Jesus had to flee. Amen? So, we want to look at Mark, the 16th chapter. Amen. I'm going to grab my sword here and bring it close because uh, I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, the eyesight is not as good. That's why I have some assistance. Amen? And they even had the, the audacity to go by focal on me. So, don't you laugh. Your time's coming. Amen. So here we go. It says in Mark 16, 17, it says, And these signs shall follow them that what? Believe. We can pause a minute right there. 
That's a key. <coughs> Excuse me. These signs shall follow them what? That believe. That's indicated in order for this to work, in order for this to take place in your life, you must be a believer of what you're about to take, partake. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to believe it. Therefore, I'm going to submit to you right now, it's time to understand. If you're going to follow this course that we're going to, it's time to stop following, uh, or, or other words, depending on your pastor's anointing. It's time to stop depending on your mother's anointing, your grandmother's anointing. If you are in the body of Christ, you have your own anointing. It's time to start tapping into your own anointing. Stop riding because it's not going to work. Once you're at the age of understanding, you got to come into your own. you got to study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Rightly divided the word of truth. But right here it says that, it says that, and these signs shall follow them that believe. That's a qualifier. Okay? It says, in my name. That should tell you something else. You can't do it just because of who you are. It's in Jesus' name that we get ready to do what needs to take place. First of all, in our lives, to get rid of the demons in our lives. Second, in order to be able to help somebody else come about and come out of their sinful nature. It says that in my name shall they what? Cast out devils. That word shall means that it's guaranteed. There's no doubt about it. First of all, if you believe it, amen, if you believe what, you, what you're studying here, if you believe what you're digesting and, 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 and take uh, a God with Jesus at, his, at what he's saying, because you are what? A believer. Then he said, you shall cast out devils. That don't, you don't have to be no, no uh, apostle. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be an evangelist. You, the only thing you got to do is believe. So stop believing all this mess that's going across the pulpit. I'm the only one who can get somebody to say, uh, you got to wait. You don't have to wait for nothing. All you got to do is believe. And Jesus said, in my name, you shall cast out devil. So all of you that are sitting there on your seats to do nothing, you got to get these demons out of you first. And how do you do that? In Jesus' name, because you are a believer, I command this or that, whatever it is. And we're going to get further into that later, whatever. Uh, a name of your demon is what I'm saying. Whatever it is that you're plagued with to come out. You have to denounce that spirit. That he come out of you first. If you are a liar, I denounce you lying spirit. Come out of me. You have no rule over me any longer. I curse the very root that you you the very root of lying. And I command you once you once you identify, now you gotta tell it where to go. I command you to go to hell. Uh, no, I'm not cursing. That's the holding place. Go back to your dry place, loose here, and let go. So once you understand that, you, you, you should already begin to feel the authority in just doing that. Amen? Feel your authority because the truth be told, when you tap it into your anointing, your anointing, what you're tapping into is your authority. Amen? So, it says, these signs shall follow them that believe in Jesus' name. They shall cast out what? Devils, huh? Devils, demons. It's all the same. Devils, demons, they shall speak with new tongues. I, I say this all the time in my congregation. It ain't hamada hamada. It ain't that kind of speaking. What you start speaking is no longer speaking in the uh, uh, the negative. You'll start speaking in the, the affirmative. In other words, you'll start speaking as Jesus spoke. Huh? You will stop saying, I can't. You will stop telling lies. What, what do you mean by telling lies? I can't is a lie. It's flat-footed a lot. When the Bible clearly says that you can do all things through Christ Jesus. Amen? Remember, ignorance is just the lack of the knowledge. It doesn't mean you're stupid. So don't let nobody sell you that ticket that you don't have to buy. Come on, somebody. Ignorance is what most of us are. That means, what do you mean, ignorant, apostle? What I mean is this. If you don't have the knowledge, then you're ignorant of it. But as soon as you gain the knowledge, then you know what? You become empowered. Do you feel what I'm saying? So 
What does it have to do with, with my new tongue? You will stop saying I can't do all. I mean, I I can't do this. And understand, you can do all things. You will stop thinking that you are a wimp when God said that you're more than a conqueror. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will stop believing the lies out there when greatest heat is inside of you. That heat is of this earth. And if you know who that is, that's that that one that's called the the, the comforter, the, the comforter that come to teach and lead you in the what all truth. Come on, somebody. Not some of the truth, all truth. The problem is we don't know how to avail ourselves to this. But the next thing is we don't have the belief to believe in just that one verse, 16. But then when you go to verse 17, it says, And these signs shall follow them, what? That believe, huh? Excuse me, I, I was wrong. I said 16. But I mean, when we go to verse 18, it says, They shall take up serpents, amen, other words, those, those things or those demons, those things, and everybody wants to think it's just, just snakes and stuff like that. Come on, serpent, define it. It's those demons that you have problems with. If you pick up uh, a poverty, if you pick up sicknesses, if you pick up none of these things, huh? They should be supposed to be able to hurt you. Why? Because what does the scripture say? They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly things, it shall not hurt them. Now, I'm not saying you go out there and tempt God and say you're going to pick up a can, a can of a decon, I think that's what it's called, rat poison, and then you're going to mix it up in a glass and you're going to drink it. Ain't going to happen to me because I'm a child of God. Let me tell you something. You're going you're gonna to fall dead. Are you hearing me? We shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Are you hearing me? But what I am saying, somebody trying to do something to you, the grace of God and the protection of God will let no harm come nigh unto you. Because they're trying to kill you. They're trying to set you up. So in any manner, form or fashion, the weapon that formed against you shall not what? Prosper. That's what I'm saying. So again, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Let me tell you something. I know the scripture says if there be any sick among us, let them call on the elders of the church. Amen. But what if your elders in Timbuktu? It's your time to activate your authority and your anointing and pray that prayer that that, that saint need. Standing in the gap, touching and agreeing that he be delivered from that sickness or she be delivered from that sickness. Come on. This is talking to the people of God. Them that what? Believe. If you are a believer, you have the right to pray and you have the right to talk to this sickness and you have a right to call it out. But it only happens if you believe. Amen. So this is our base scripture for, for this lesson until God takes us over into another series. I want you to understand that we have demon forces that are assigned to us. And you know what? The miraculous thing that, that most people don't even teach each individual that are called saints is the fact that if the, if the Bible says that no weapon can form the, that's formed against you shall prosper, understand that in the kingdom of hell there are ranking demons. Come on somebody. And let me tell you something, in the kingdom of God, you have different levels that you're on. Your demons could never be po more powerful than you. Are you hearing me? Your demons can be, cannot be more powerful than you. What are you saying? In other words, your demon cannot overtake you, but they possess as much power as you have. So what are you saying? What I'm saying is, because you're more than a conqueror, that takes you over the limit. So you should be able to bring everything down that is coming against you. Amen? Apostle, but that, that really is, is just going against what I've been taught. Let me tell you, God is not a man he shall lie, nor the son of man that he has to repent. He said no weapon, no matter what it is, what it looks like, formed against you shall prosper. And I want you to know that there's no devil in hell has the authority to override you. Matter of fact, you remember that anything that comes against you, incest against you, has to be approved by God first. God expects you to win. God expects you to overcome. Amen? And I want you to understand, my time is drawn short, amen, that, how should I put this? The way to overcome the enemy, the best way to overcome the enemy is to know the procedures of God. You stay within the procedure of God, which we're going to go through this deliverance court. The procedure of God is letting you know now you must be a believer and you can overcome these adversities. And you shall be able to get these demons out of you. Amen? So, I, I, I'm going to be teaching more and more on the next sex, segment, amen, but I want to just thank everybody for coming out and spending a little time, I'm always excited, and I, I would like to thank everyone for, you know, tuning in today, 
I hope everyone, you know, will receive word and power from this show. Until next week, study what I've talked about. Look at those verses yourself. And, you know, if you can believe what I've said, then you believe it. If you can receive what I said, then you believe it. Amen? Let me make it straight. If you can believe it, just receive it. Amen? Till the next time, you have been you have been sitting in with Apostle G. Dixon Jr., aka New Rev. See you next time.